Welcome back, Sebastian here. So today, before I do my preview uh, for the British Grand Prix, I thought that I'd take a look at uh, next year's calendar, which was announced earlier today. So the season next year will start on uh, March 2nd with the Bahrain Grand Prix, same as it has uh, every year since uh, 2021. Next, we'll have the uh, uh, Saudi Arabian Grand Prix on March 9th, followed by the Australian Grand Prix on March 24th. Then, uh, probably the one of the two major moves that we've seen, what we have for next year's calendar, the Japanese Grand Prix uh, is moving from its traditional uh, fall slot that's had for a very, very long time to the spring, April 7th in Japan. Next, uh, April 21st is in China and May 5th is in Miami, the first race in North America. Then we go back to Europe for a uh, double header in uh, Imola and Monaco, May 19th and May 26th, followed by another jump to North America in Canada for the Canadian Grand Prix on June 9th, followed by the Spanish Grand Prix on June 23rd. Then uh, once we get into the summer leg of the season, we have uh, uh, the Austrian Grand Prix on June 30th and the British Grand Prix on July 7th. That follows up with a uh, double, double header before the summer break, Hungarian Grand Prix on July 21st, followed by the Belgian Grand Prix on July 28th. Uh, then we have the Dutch Grand Prix on August 25th, followed by the Italian Grand Prix on September 1st. Uh, to round out the month of September, we have the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, which has effectively swapped positions with the Japanese Grand Prix on September 15th, and the Singapore Grand Prix on September 22nd. Uh, then we have our uh, North American leg, October 20th uh, in the American Grand Prix at Coda. Uh, October 27th in Mexico City for the Mexico City Grand Prix, followed, finished with uh, going into November, we have the Brazilian Grand Prix on November 3rd. Uh, then we have our second, what will be our second race in Vegas, November 23rd, followed by uh, Qatar on December 1st, and the UAE for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix to finish out the season as it has for the last decade and a half now. Uh, on December 8th. So a very, very long calendar. I think free practice one uh, for the Bahrain Grand Prix start, actually starts on February 29th. So we're going all the way from February to December. And with the expansion of the calendar, it's really turned into an almost a 24, uh, a 12 month uh, sport, which I kind of I kind of like having the winter because it makes you, uh, it makes me uh, more, in, I don't know. I feel like I anticipate uh, I'm in greater anticipation of the new season with the longer break. So of course there's some things to note. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six double headers, and then we have two triple headers to finish the season, which is a bit odd that you would not have the Vegas race in a triple header with the race in Coda, but it is what it is, and it's instead in a triple header with Qatar and UAE. Um, and then you also have these three breaks here of three weeks or more. You have the traditional four week summer vacation uh, between Belgium and Netherlands, which will be the same as it is this year. And then for oddly, oddly enough, we have this month vacation here between, or this month off between the Singapore Grand Prix and the US Grand Prix, which effectively is kind of where the uh, Japanese Grand Prix used to be. And they haven't really found anything to replace it yet. Uh, and then of course we have three weeks here between the Brazilian Grand Prix and the Vegas Grand Prix. So we do have quite a few long gaps in the second half of the season, which is almost the opposite of this year where we had a tons of gaps uh, to start the season, the gap between Australia and uh, Baku and the gap between uh, Miami and uh, Monaco, I believe. Uh, of course, the other thing to note is that Chinese Grand Prix is for now tentatively back on the calendar. Uh, first it will be the first race since 2019, all canceled because of COVID. Um, also, Formula One, of course, has been trying to expand the calendar throughout the years, and they've always tried to hit 24 as that magic number, and it seems every year something happens to prevent that from happening. Uh, this year it was Imola, last year it was the invasions in Russia, before that it was uh, COVID, and before that it was even more COVID. So we'll see if we actually get 24 races next year. Um, that'll be an interesting point. Uh, they've been trying to regionalize the calendar and trying to stick more races closer together based on region, which is why you have this Australia, Japan, China, but none of them are back to back. Like you could do Australia and Japan back to back. Uh, I've read online that China cannot be done back to back because apparently customs in uh, China are a bit, uh, 
they're not the easiest to deal with. So that's why they leave an extra week when they're entering China. Um, the other thing as well is, you know, you can have Miami and Canada, you would think are logical. Um, you, I, I don't know enough about Miami to be able to say uh, if you can actually even host them back to back. But I think the problem is you would have to move Monaco around uh, if you wanted to have Canada and Miami back to back, which I think is possible, but it's a bit of a long shot. Um, that being said, the rest of the calendar is not too terrible. I think you, of course, have your majority of your European races together. Um, and I think they have, Formula One has said that it will take many years for that, uh, for like regionalization to eventually take place because they need time to deal with all the contracts and it'll take a little bit of time each year. Of course, the really important thing that I haven't mentioned is that for both Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, the race will actually be held on Saturday, not Sunday. Um, and that is because, uh, I believe that is because they don't want it to conflict with Ramadan, which is obviously a big deal in the Middle East. Um, so of course that means qualifying on Friday and free practice on Thursday. So not great for those of you in Europe um, or in North America who are then forced to watch qualifying on a work day, but you know, that's how it is. Um, so of course that's gonna be something that'll be a bit different uh, this year for those two races. So that's really all uh, for the 2024 Formula One calendar. Not terrible. We don't have any brand new tracks uh, next year. So it'll still be the same uh, 24 tracks that we were supposed to have this year, uh, just in a slightly different order. So that's all. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll be back a bit later for my preview for the British Grand Prix. Goodbye.